In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Anesti. Christ is risen. Christos Anviat. Amin. Amin. It's a beautiful day to celebrate uh, two incredibly wonderful saints. Um, a, a mother and a father. I, I mean, a mother and a son. And, and, uh, and, you know, we don't see that very often in the church, that on the same day we have a mother celebrated with her son. That's a really cool thing that we celebrate always in the month of Mother's Day. I think that's really cool because, you know, we have this uh, beautiful American feast of Mother's Day, which uh, I don't think our American culture knows how to celebrate that properly uh, just yet, considering, you know, all the backlash that came whenever uh, this NFL guy started talking about how being a mother is such a wonderful thing, and then he got yelled at by everybody for it. I mean, it's unbelievable. I don't think we know how to celebrate mothers yet. I don't, I don't think we're there yet. Um, we'll get there. We'll get there. But for now, the church knows how to, so this is good. Uh, and on this day, we celebrate a mother and a son, Elen, uh, Eleni and Costa, Helen and, and Costandinos. Um, and uh, we celebrate them in, in a way for many reasons, many reasons. The chief of those reasons is because this was found by Helen because her son had conquered th um, those enemies of Christianity at least the political enemies of Christianity. And this is something that we have to remember and remind ourselves that um, there are enemies of Christianity. There have always been, there always will be. And that's not something that we need to look for the fights. Trust me, they'll fi the fights will find us. <laughs> well, all we have to do is continue to remain uh, as firm as possible. But sometimes there is this moment in which there is just such a backlash against Christianity, like what was happening during the Roman Empire at that time, that something needed to be done. Something needed to be done. And this was a political war that Constantine fought against uh, the per persecution of Christians. And, and, and he won that fight. And he won that fight through the cross. The cross that appeared in the sky. And this is why we hear um, the epistle that we heard today. Now it's interesting that the epistle that we heard today is the epistle that we heard today. Because in Acts of the Apostles, we hear this story twice. We hear it twice. We hear it once when it actually took place. When, when Saul was on the road to Damascus, and we hear it as it, we hear it at, like in real time. That's what they would say, it, in real time. We hear it as it's actually happening in Acts of the Apostles, in the chronological order of events as it was happening. And in that story, we hear about how Paul was blinded, Saul was blinded by the light that came from the sky, that he was literally knocked off of his horse as he was going to Damascus. And why was he going to Damascus? To persecute more Christians, because that was his job. That's what, he was, that's what he was called to do. He was a zealous Jew who was uh, persecuting those, um, um, uh, the, 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 the followers of the imposter Jesus. That's what he was thinking. That's what his brain was thinking. So that's the first, but we didn't hear that story today. We didn't hear the story of it happening in real time. What did we hear? We heard the story of Paul as he was standing and giving an account before King Agrippa, and he shared his story with King Agrippa. He was doing that in his defense because he had been arrested. So this is the second time in the uh, book, Acts of the Apostles, that we hear this story. Now, why is it that we didn't hear it if we're celebrating the appearance in the sky of the cross that Constantine saw, put it on his banner, and, and defeated Maximian to eventually create freedom of religion and make Christianity the state religion of the empire. Why is it that we didn't hear it in real time? God bless you. Why isn't it, why isn't it that we didn't hear it as it was happening in Acts of the Apostles? 
where we could hear about how he was struck blind, how he went to, to Ananias and he received his sight through, through, uh, through uh, blessings and baptisms. Why didn't we hear that story? Why did we have to hear him as he's been arrested? Do we know? Do we know? <laughs> this is important. That the church does not make a mistake about this. The reason we hear the, the second time and not the first in Acts of the Apostles is because we are celebrating two individuals, Saints Constantine and Helen, who are called what? What are they called? They're called crowned rulers, right? They're sovereigns. They are called is apostoli. Is apostoli. Now, I just said this sermon on Sunday. What does it mean to be an apostle? What, what did you have to see to make yourself an apostle? You had to see this. You had to see this. You had to see the resurrected Jesus Christ. You had to actually behold the resurrected Jesus Christ. It's a, if it's a pizza, I, I, I get a piece. I'm joking. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, you had to see the resurrected Jesus Christ. To be called an apostle, you had to behold the, resurrection, the, re the resurrected Jesus Christ. Okay? And you had to be one of the twelve. Okay? Now, Paul is called an apostle. He witnessed the resurrected Jesus Christ. And the light that came from that struck him blind. But he wasn't one of the twelve, was he? But he was called by God to fulfill that twelfth spot. We casted lots, got Matthias... But Jesus said, uh-uh, that's fine. Matthias is good. He's a good person, no, no offense, but I'm going to pick my 12th. And Paul, as you can see in, the, in, in Pentecost and in um, the uh, Analipsi, the, the Ascension, you see Paul is to the left of Panagia and to the right of, uh, of Peter. That's Paul. He wasn't there for Pentecost. He wasn't there for the Ascension. He wasn't present. He was still a Jew. He, had to, he did not believe in Jesus Christ at that point. We're hearing about Paul the Apostle today and his defense before King Agrippa because we are celebrating two people that are not apostles, but they are equals to the apostles. In which, which means for us, who did not see the Lord resurrected, we have beheld him in our hearts as we take communion. But what it means for us is, is that they bore witness by their lives of the resurrected Christ. St. Cosmas Atolos is equal to the apostles. St. Mary Magdalene, equal to the apostles. St. Fotini the Samaritan woman, equal to the apostles. Saints Constantine and Helen are equals to the apostles. And what we see in the way the church gives this to us is not that we're seeing this in real time as it's happening, but rather as Paul is giving testimony. As he's witnessing at the risk of his own life, before King Agrippa, telling King Agrippa, no, I believe in Jesus Christ because I saw him. Because the testimony that I believe is more important than anything you're going to tell me. That's what Constantine and Helen were. That's what Constantine and Helen were. Yeah, okay, fine. It, it, the Edict of Milan had been given. So there was freedom throughout the whole Roman Empire. You could believe whatever you wanted to believe. But where did Helen go as soon as that was done? Where did she go? Right into the lion's den. Right into the place where all the Jews were. Right into the place where all the people who hated Christians were. And what did she find? Jews who hated Christians, pagans who hated Christians, and, and genuinely people who just didn't even care. And she put herself, now fine, she had soldiers and everything with her and, and an entourage of people, but she went in to the, literally the lion's den to find all of these powerful and precious sites and artifacts that we have in our church still today. The most precious, of course, is the cross. And every time she went the pagans helped us, by the way. They, they built uh, pagan temples on, the, on all the sites that Jesus Christ was, was, uh, 
you know, found, you know, like every time she found a pagan temple, it's because that was a place that Jesus Christ went and the pagans were trying to cover it up. So she would tear down the pagan temple and build a church there. That's why we still have these sites as pilgrimage sites for us. But nevertheless, she was in that place where she was basically bearing witness by her own life on I, uh, about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I don't care, she said, about the Jews who hate us, the pagans who, uh, you know, who were just defeated and are angry at us. I don't care about those things. I care about spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And to do that, we need these sites. We need these places to be once again holy, to be viewed as holy, to not be in the hands of people who are unbelieving in Jesus Christ, but rather to be in the presence and in the hands of those who believe that he resurrected, who trust and have faith in that beautiful uh, historical event and everything else that came from it. So when we go to the Holy Land, when we go to the Holy Land and we visit the Jordan River, the place where he was baptized, and we visit Bethlehem and, and the place where he was born, and we visit different places, when we visit those places, we are visiting spots that were recovered by her. Her icon's in the back. We are visiting sites that are recovered by St. Helen. We have this beautiful history of Christ because the apostles preserved it? No. But because two equals to the apostles preserved it and recovered them for us. And how many millions of people, the Holy Sepulcher, the site of the Holy Sepulcher, that's another one. How many millions of people have been, have had their faith reassured and their belief in Christ confirmed when they have visited these places. Now, we don't need to go to the, I've never been to any of those places. But we don't need it, but at the same time, oh my goodness, it's amazing. It's amazing to be a part of that, to witness it, to understand how powerful these things are. This is no small thing that Helen did. And Constantine. It's no small thing. It's an enormous thing for the church. And this is why we celebrate them, among other reasons. But this is one of the main reasons why we celebrate them. For the freedom that Constant ga Constantine gave the church and making it the state religion. But in, more importantly, for the faith that they both had in the res resurrected Jesus Christ to bear testimony the way Paul did. Now, Constantine wasn't really at any risk because, you know, he's the emperor. <laughs> you know what I mean? But Helen was, even with the soldiers and everything, going into hostile territory to resurrect what was dead, at least in the minds of the pagans and the Jews. And no more. It will, it will never be dead again. These places and these sites will never be dead again. So we honor them while we have faith and believe that Jesus Christ still is capable of making us, not apostles, we can't be apostles, we weren't there, but we can be equals to the apostles. If the faith that bears witness, like Paul did in the epistle today, can bear witness in our lives to a world that absolutely has lost what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a mother, what it means to be faithful, what it means to be kind and gentle, what it means to be loving. We have to preserve those things. We have to preach those things. We have to bear witness to the truth of those virtues in Jesus Christ. Not the, not the definition of the world. That definition is not correct. His definition. His life. The life that Helen and Constantine lived as best as they could. Especially Helen. She was so pure. So holy. We have to preserve that. 
and restore it back to the place where Jesus Christ wants it. Not just because it's gone, but because, we have, because our world has forgotten it. We need to restore it back to where it belongs. So that we, too, can be equals to the apostles. And honor Constantine and Helen for the saints that they are in our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christos Anesti.